Hi everyone, I'm Miss Katie from Rockland Public Library and today we're going to be reading The Tale of Squirrel Nutkin by Beatrix Potter. Now this story is filled with riddles. Do you ever tell riddles at your house? The story is kind of about a naughty squirrel who doesn't really do what they're supposed to and is too busy telling riddles, but I really like riddles. Do you know any? Like how about what's black and white and red all over? Well, a newspaper. It's black and white and you read it. And if you read it before, red, you read it before you use the word red instead of read. So black and white and red all over. How about mm, what goes up but never comes down? Your age, it keeps going up, but you never get younger. Now let's see what riddles we have in store from Squirrel Nutkin. This is the tale about a tail, a tail that belonged to a little red squirrel and his name was Nutkin, there he is. He had a brother called Twinkleberry and a great many cousins. They lived in a wood at the edge of a lake. In the middle of the lake, there was an island covered with trees and nut bushes. And among those tree stands, a hollow oak tree, which is the house of an old owl who is called Old Brown. One autumn when the nuts were ripe and the leaves on the hazel bushes were golden and green, Nutkin and Twinkleberry and all the other little squirrels came out of the wood and down to the edge of the lake. There they go. They made little rafts out of twigs and they paddled away over the water to the Owl Island to gather nuts. Each squirrel had a little sack and a large oar and spread out his tail for a sail. Do you see them with their tails straight up to catch the wind? They also took with them an offering of three fat mice as a present for Old Brown and put them down upon his doorstep. Then Twinkleberry and the other little squirrels each made a low bow and said politely, Old Mr. Brown, will you favor us with permission to gather nuts upon your island? Oh, they're being so nice. Can anyone hear the wind? The wind is so loud outside right now. But Nutkin was excessively impertinent in his manners and bobbed up and down like a little red cherry, singing, Riddle me, riddle me, rote to tote, a little wee man in a red, red coat, a staff in his hand and a stone in his throat. If you tell me this riddle, I'll give you a groat. Now, this riddle is as old as the hills. Mr. Brown paid no attention whatsoever to Nutkin. He shut his eyes obstinately and went to sleep. <sighs> Do you think that we could solve the riddle, though? He's a little frustrated and maybe squirrels being a little naughty, but what did Nutkin say? Riddle me, riddle me, wrote to tote, a little wee man in a red, red coat. So he's a red coat, a staff in his hand and a stone in his throat. If you'll tell me this riddle, I'll give you a groat. Let's see. So we have a red coat a staff in his hand, and a stone in his throat. Now, the author has been very tricky here, and she's actually given us the answer. Let's see. He bobbed up and down like a little red cherry when he sang. That's because the riddle, the answer to the riddle is a cherry. A cherry has a red coat. It has, let's see, a staff in its hand, it has its stem coming up and it has a stone in its throat. It has its seed inside. 
So it has a red on the outside, a stem, and a seed on the inside. So a little wee man in a red, red coat, a staff in his hand, and a stone in his throat. The answer is a cherry. Let's see if we can figure out any more of Nutkin's riddles. The squirrels filled their little sacks with nuts and sailed home in the evening. But the next morning, they all came back again to Owl Island and Twinkleberry and the others brought a fine fat mole and laid it on the stone in front of Old Brown's doorway and said, Mr. Brown, will you favor us with your gracious permission to gather some more nuts? But Nutkin, who had no respect, began to dance up and down, twinkling old, tickling old Mr. Brown with a nettle and singing, Old Mr. B, riddle me re, hitty pity within the wall, hitty pity without the wall. If you touch hitty pity, hitty pity will bite you. <gasps> Mr. Brown woke up suddenly and carried the mole into his house. I don't think he wanted to deal with Nutkin at all. Do you think we can solve this riddle? Let's see. Old Mr. B, riddle me re, hitty pity within the wall, hitty pity without the wall. If you touch hitty pity, hitty pity will bite you. Hmm. Well, I don't think this is something we use anymore, but they used to say hitty pity to mean a nettle. We even see the word nettle ahead because again, Beatrix Potter is giving us a hint. Let's see. Nutkin, who had no respect, began to dance up and down, tickling old Mr. Brown with a nettle. So we have one right here. Do you see that plant? That plant is a nettle. So we have a riddle that's solved with something that he has in his hand, a nettle. Let's see what we have next. And I hope old Mr. Brown doesn't get too frustrated with that goofy, goofy, goofy squirrel. Let's see. He shut the door in Nutkin's face. Presently, a little thread of blue smoke from a wood fire came up the top of the tree, and Nutkin peeped through the keyhole and sang, A house full, a hole full, you cannot gather a bowl full. I like that one. A house full, a hole full, you cannot gather a bowl full. What do you suppose this riddle is? Hmm, something you can have a house full of and a hole full of, but you can't gather a bowl full of. Well, once again, just like every other rhyme in the story, every other riddle, she's given it away. What did we hear that old Mr. Brown was doing when he went inside? He lit a fire, probably to cook his new food, and what was coming out of it? Smoke! Smoke! You could have a house full of smoke and a hole full of smoke, but you can't gather smoke. You cannot gather a bowl full. So our third riddle, the answer is smoke! The squirrels searched for nuts all over the island and filled their little sacks, but Nutkin gathered oak apples, yellow and scarlet, and sat upon the beach stump playing marbles and watching the door of old Mr. Brown. Ah, not only is he not helping giving gifts to Mr. Brown, but he's also not collecting any nuts once he gets there. On the third day, the squirrels got up very early and went fishing. They caught seven fat minnows as a present to old Brown. They paddled over the lake and landed under a crooked chestnut tree on Owl Island. Twinkleberry and the other six little squirrels each carried a fat minnow. But Nutkin, who had no nice manners, brought no present at all. He ran in front singing, The man in the wilderness said to me, How many strawberries grow in the sea? I answered him as I thought was good, As many red herrings as grow in the wood. But old Mr. Brown took no interest in riddles not even when the answers were provided to him. This one is fun. So let's take a look at this riddle. 
The man in the wilderness said to me, how many strawberries grow in the sea? How many strawberries grow in the sea? Can you answer that? How many strawberries grow in the sea? Mm, none, zero, right? Strawberries don't grow in the sea. I answered him as I thought, good, as many red herrings as grow in the wood. Does anyone know what a herring is? A herring is a fish. So how many fish grow in the woods? Zero, that's right, zero. No fish grow in the woods. So let's see, how many strawberries grow in the sea? Zero, as many red herrings as grow in the wood. The answer is zero. There aren't any of either. Let's try that one more time. The man in the wilderness said to me, how many strawberries grow in the sea? I answered him as I thought, good, as many red herrings as grow in the wood. <laughs> On the fourth day, the squirrels brought a present of six fat beetles, which were as good as plums in plum pudding for old Mr. Brown. Each beetle was wrapped up carefully in a dock leaf and fastened with a pine needle pin. But Nutkin, uh-oh, sang as rudely as ever. Old Mr. B, riddle me re, flower of England, fruit of Spain, met together in a shower of rain, put in a bag tied round with string. If you tell me this riddle, I'll give you a ring. Which was ridiculous of Nutkin because he did not have a ring to give to Old Brown. Hmm, let's see what answer the author gave us at the beginning. Do you see what they were eating? They were talking about, oh, beetles were just as good as plum pudding. So flower of England, fruit of Spain, met together in a shower of rain, put in a bag tied round with a string. So it's plum pudding. I've never had plum pudding. Have you had plum pudding before? Does it sound like how Nutkin explained it? The other squirrels hunted up and down the nut bushes, but Nutkin gathered robin pincushions off the briar bush and stuck them full of pine needle pins. Again, he's not doing anything to help. On the fifth day, the squirrels brought a present of wild honey. It was so sweet and sticky that they licked their fingers as they put it down upon the stone. They had stolen it out of a bumblebee's nest on the tippity top of the hill. But Nutkin skipped up and down singing, hum a bum buzz buzz, hum a bum buzz. As I went over Timble Tine, I met a flock of bonny swine, some yellow necked, some yellow backed, they were very bonny swine that air went over timble time. That goofy, goofy nutkin. What is he talking about this time? Let's see. Hum a buzz, 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 hum a buzz. I think I maybe know. What goes buzz, buzz that he might be talking about? It's a bee. Hum a buzz, buzz, hum a bum buzz. As I went over Timble Tide, I met a flock of bonny swine. Some yellow necked, some yellow backed, just like a bee. They were the very bonniest swine that e'er went over Timble Tide. The answer is bees. Bzz, bzz, bzz. Old Mr. Brown turned up his eyes in disgust at the impertinence of Nutkin, but he ate up the honey. You think he's getting frustrated with all the goofiness coming from Nutkin? The squirrels filled their little sacks with nuts, but Nutkin sat upon a big flat rock and played nine pins with a crab apple and green fur cones. Look, he's bowling. See his little bowling pins? And there is his bowling ball. On the sixth day, which was Saturday, the squirrels came along for one last time. They brought a new laid egg. Mm, do you think that's going to be the answer to our riddle? Whatever they bring is always connected, right? An egg in a little rush basket as a last parting present for Old Brown to say thank you for letting them pick all of those nuts. 
But Nutkin ran in front, laughing and shouting, Humpty Dumpty lies in the back, with a white counterpane round his neck. Forty doctors and forty rights cannot put Humpty Dumpty to rights. Humpty Dumpty, the egg. Some people say Humpty Dumpty is an egg. Hmm. Do you think Humpty Dumpty is an egg? A lot of times he looks like one in illustrations. Humpty Dumpty lies in the back with a white counterpane round his neck. Forty doctors and forty rights cannot put Humpty Dumpty to rights. Now, old Mr. Brown took an interest in eggs. He opened one eye and then shut it again. But still, he did not speak. Nutkin began more and more impertinent. Old Mr. B, old Mr. B, Hicklemore, Hicklemore, on the king's kitchen floor, all the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't drive Hicklemore, Hicklemore, off the king's kitchen door. Nutkin danced up and down like a sunbeam. That's the answer to the riddle, sunbeam. Like a sunbeam, but still old Mr. Brown said nothing. My goodness. Nutkin began again. Arthur O'Bower has broken his band. He comes roaring up the land. The king of Scots with all his power cannot turn Arthur of the bower. Nutkin made a whirring noise to sound like the wind. Which is the answer to the riddle. Wind. And he took a jumping run right onto the head of Old Brown. Then all at once there was a flutterment and a scuttlement and a loud squeak and the other squirrels scuttered away into the bushes. Oh no, I think Nutkin has gone too far. When they came back very cautiously and peeped around the tree, there was Old Brown sitting on his doorstep quite still with his eyes closed as if nothing had happened. But Nutkin was in his waistcoat pocket. Uh-oh. Do you think the owl's gonna eat him? Let's see. This looks like the end of the story, but it isn't. Old Brown carried Nutkin into the house and held him up by his tail, intending to skin him. But Nutkin pulled so very hard that his tail broke in two and he dashed up the staircase and escaped out the attic window. <gasps> there he goes with just half a tail. And to this day, if you meet Nutkin up a tree and ask him a riddle, he will throw sticks at you and stamp his foot and scold you and shout, I think he's learned his lesson. The end. Great listening, everyone. Thank you for listening to the story of Nutkin with me. Nutkin, that silly, goofy riddle teller who wasn't very kind and didn't help out, but had some very silly riddles to share. <laughs> I hope you all have a chance to share some silly riddles today. Like, how about this one? How do you make an octopus giggle? You give it 10 tickles. Get it? Tentacles or 10 tickles. I hope your day is filled with silly riddles and lots of other fun. And keep an eye out for a squirrel with half a tail. It'll be our friend, Squirrel Nutkin. Have a wonderful day and I can't wait to reach you soon. Bye-bye.